So you're thinking about doing a trip with your bike and you've heard the terms bike packing and bike touring being thrown around a lot. Well, in this video, we're going to sort out the differences and find out which one suits you the best. So this is my bike packing rig. And as you can see, I've mounted my bags onto my hardtail mountain bike. People usually do bike packing with either a mountain bike or a gravel bike and they tend to do most of their riding off-road. However, these days you also see people do a lot of bike packing on paved roads since your bike packing setup is a lot more aerodynamic than your typical touring one. So you're able to cover more distance in the same amount of time. A typical bike packing setup consists of a saddlebag, a frame bag and a handlebar roll. One benefit with the bags is that they can be mounted right onto the bike itself. So you don't need to have a dedicated bike with racks. Instead, you can pretty much use whatever bike you want to. By eliminating the racks, you're going to shed some weight. But most of the weight savings is going to come from you not being able to bring as much gear as you would with the bike touring setup. The storage capacity with a bike packing setup is usually about half of what you would be able to bring with a pannier setup. The bike packing bags are more firmly attached to the bike than the panniers, so they won't move around as much as the panniers if you find yourself going off road. Plus, since they have a much more narrow profile, the chances of them catching against a tree when you're riding a narrow single track is much smaller. Therefore, going with a lighter and slimmer setup allows you to discover places that you normally wouldn't be able to go to with a traditional bike touring setup. There are a couple of cons as well. First of all, you're probably looking at half the storage capacity as you would with a traditional touring setup. So you're going to have to be really picky when it comes to what you're going to bring on your bike packing trip. And you might be looking at getting some new ultralight gear as well to be able to fit everything inside of these three bags. And sometimes that means not bringing a stove or limiting your sleeping gear. So you might be looking at more restaurant stops and hotel nights during your trip. And if you are bringing a stove, you have limited storage space inside of these bags. So you're probably looking at stopping at convenience stores almost every day or bringing a lot of freeze-dried meals. Packing everything is going to be a lot harder than with the panniers where you can pretty much stuff everything in no particular order. Here you're going to have to be really organized and pack everything in a specific way to be able to use every single bit of space. So packing up in the morning is going to take you a couple of extra minutes. Plus you're going to have to pack things that you're going to need throughout the day in a specific bag such as the frame bag. So you don't have to unpack the whole handlebar bag or the seat bag when you need something during the day. And with minimal storage space you're probably looking at using these shock cords that are typically on top of bike packing bags. And these are also great for storing things that you might need throughout the day. But you might run into some bad weather during the day so don't store things here that need to stay dry. So this would be an ideal place to store your rain jacket for instance. So let's go back to my trusty old touring bike and this setup is great for when you're gonna be mainly cycling on paved roads or if you're gonna be away for a really long time or if you prioritize enjoying the surroundings around you instead of covering a lot of distance. So your typical bike touring setup usually consists of two or four panniers and a handlebar bag. I have my panniers mounted onto my bike using front and rear racks. And the benefit of having these panniers is that I have almost endless of storage capacity. For better or for worse. With this setup you're gonna be sleeping like a king and you can also be your own gourmet chef at the end of the day since you're able to bring along a complete kitchen setup with a stove and spices. And I vary a lot between going with four panniers as in this case or two panniers depending on how long I'm gonna be away for and what my comfort level 
is gonna look like. I merely ride on paved roads but I'm also able to tackle the odd gravel road here and there as well. The cons of going with a traditional bike touring setup is that you're probably going to be a lot slower than you would with a bike packing setup. Both due to the fact that you're probably bringing a lot more gear and a touring bike is a lot heavier than a mountain bike or a gravel bike. This is due to the fact that a touring bike is more stable and rigid and it's built that way to be able to withstand more forces and heavy loads. And some people also might say that you need to have a specific touring bike to be able to go bike touring. And there is some truth into that but you can always convert almost any bike into a somewhat decent touring bike. And going with a pannier setup you have more loose parts involved which means a greater risk of something failing on you down the road. Bolts can rattle loose and a pannier can even jump off the rack, which has happened to me a couple of times before. And with the bike packing setup you have all of your gear strapped onto your bike, so the likelihood of this happening is pretty small. So which one of these two are more affordable? Well, you're probably gonna spend around the same amount of money for both setups. But what's going to cost you with a bike packing setup is since you have less storage capacity you're going to have to go for more ultralight gear which usually is a lot more expensive than your traditional sleeping bags and sleeping pads. You also have less space for food so you're probably looking at more restaurant stops or bringing freeze dried meals. So which setup suits you the best? It really comes down to a couple of questions that you need to ask yourselves first. What type of roads are you mainly going to be cycling on? Do you prefer going off-road to stay away from the traffic? Or are you just fine with going on a bit more busier roads? What's your comfort level? Can you live with being a little bit wet and cold? Or do you have to be prepared for all kinds of weather? And what type of sleeping situation are you going for? This really sets the standard on how much gear you need to bring on your bike trip. If you're a smaller rider, you're probably going to have a bike with a smaller frame and therefore it might be a bit tricky to fit a frame bag inside of your triangle. You're probably also going to have less tire clearance between the top of the tire and the bottom of the seat bag. So in this case going with a pannier setup might be a better option for you. So ask yourselves these questions and if you have a hard time deciding you can always leave a question in the comment section below. I have a lovely community with like-minded people that will gladly answer your questions if I don't do it first. And if you need some inspiration on what it's like to go on these trips I've left a couple of links here to the right with one bike packing trip and one bike touring one. So if you click the links on one of these I'll see you in that video.